And joining me now is Deputy National Security Advisor John Finer. John, good to see you. Welcome to Meet the Press. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. So let's start with President Zelensky saying that he is expecting a visit by the Secretaries of State and Defense. And he was very clear. He says, quote, they should not come here with empty hands, not just presents and cakes, but with specific weapons. What will they be offering specifically on this trip? Well, Kristen, I'd say a few things. One is that we are in very close contact, many of us, with our Ukrainian counterparts, including those two secretaries, including the president and President Zelensky at all times. We've also been quite clear that if we were going to take uh, some sort of high-level visit uh, to Ukraine, we would not be announcing that uh, in advance. So I suspect that'll be a bit of an unsatisfying answer, but nothing to say uh, further about that. In terms of empty hands, uh, I would point to the last two weeks and really the last 10 days when the United States has announced $1.6 billion in additional security assistance that is having a significant effect on the ground in terms of enabling Ukraine to continue to hold off and push back Russian forces. John, we've been talking about the possibility of a high-level trip for quite some time. If such a trip were to occur at some point, would there need to be deliverables in order for it to be effective? We have been announcing uh, deliverables, uh, which is a, a fancy word for uh, things that we are providing to the Ukrainians to enable their fight. Uh, just about every day, and if not every day, every week, and we will have more to say about that in the week ahead. You just heard Mr. Zhovka say that Russia does not have complete control of Mariupol. Is that the U.S. assessment as well? I would defer to the Ukrainians, who have a much closer kind of ground-level view of what's happening in Mariupol. Our understanding is that Russian uh, forces and Ukrainian forces are continuing to fight in that city. Uh, and we are continuing to try to get the Ukrainians as much assistance as possible to enable them in that fight. I want to ask you about this Russian official saying that the goal now is to try to build a land bridge into Moldova. Is it your assessment that that's a real threat? How concerned is the Biden administration about that possibility? Well, I think it's important to take a step back, as my Ukrainian counterpart did, and point to the shifting Russian war aims over time. We know very well that Russia's initial intention was to take over, if not all of Ukraine, the vast majority of it, to topple uh, the government because of the resistance that they've met on the ground, again, enabled by U.S. assistance and the very brave fighting uh, by the Ukrainian forces, they have had to adjust. So they are now focused on the south and the east. That's quite clear. And are they going into Moldova as well, do you I, believe? I think where they go from here remains to be seen, but they are a long way from uh, uh, cities like Odessa and, and certainly from Moldova. Uh, to your earlier question, uh, they have a lot of fighting still to do, and we think the Ukrainians are going to be very effective in fending them off. If they did move into Moldova or made moves in that direction, would that change the United States strategy at this point? Toward I think we've shown an ability to be nimble, to adjust our assistance and our approach as the Russian war aims uh, have evolved, and we will continue to do that over time, depending on how things evolve on the battlefield. Is the U.S. policy objective right now for Ukraine to defeat Russia? Can you say that definitively? So I can say our objective is to continue to enable the types of activity that allowed the Ukrainians to win a victory in the battle for Kyiv. Russia intended to take over the capital of Ukraine, to topple the Ukrainian government. The Ukrainians won that battle. We think that exact approach is going to be the way we follow through in the, in the battles ahead, now focused on the south and the east. Well, so then, by that logic, is the broader policy goal to see Ukraine defeat Russia writ large? In our view, Russia has already uh, lost uh, has already lost many of its initial war aims. They have uh, intended to divide the West. They have resulted in a, in a West and a NATO alliance that is much more united than it's ever been. They thought that they would unsettle and undermine and maybe even overthrow the Ukrainian government. President Zelensky is firmly entrenched in power and Ukrainian democracy uh, continues. Russia is more isolated than the world. Its economy is weaker. They are failing at uh, virtually every one of their initial objectives, and our objective is going to be to continue that trend. And uh, we, you just heard Mr. Zhovka express real skepticism about the U.N. Uh, Secretary General holding talks with Putin. How is the administration viewing those talks? Are you skeptical, or do you think that there could be some progress that comes out of those talks? Well, I think a very important principle for any negotiations and any discussions diplomatically on the conflict of Ukraine is that Ukrainians should be the touchstone. There should be nothing that goes on uh, about the conflict in Ukraine without close consultation and involvement of the Ukrainian government. You just heard Mr. Zhovka say that the U.N. Secretary General is not authorized to speak on behalf of Ukraine. So is there any point to these talks? Again, I defer to the Ukrainians on, on what their conversations have been with the United Nations. We're in very close consultation with the Ukrainians and our other partners and allies, and we'll be proceeding uh, along those lines. Let me ask you about these new satellite images, which appear to show evidence of one, potentially two mass graves outside of Mariupol. Uh, has the U.S. assessed that we are, in fact, looking at mass graves or these evidence of more war crimes here, John? 
So we've been quite clear that we have seen uh, significant evidence of atrocities, of war crimes. You've heard very strong language come out of our administration about a number of the tactics the Russians are using, deliberately targeting uh, civilians in places like Mariupol and, and elsewhere. Uh, that would be wholly consistent with how Russia has been prosecuting this war from the beginning. Have you confirmed that those are new, that's new evidence of new mass uh, again, I've got nothing to announce on that specific allegation, okay. but it is wholly consistent with everything that we've seen Russia doing, and it should stop. And as you well know, President Zelensky has asked the Biden administration to declare Russia a state sponsor of terrorism. What is the latest update? Is the administration prepared to do that at this point? So I think we've been clear that we're looking at that as we're looking at a whole range of other uh, additional steps that we could take to hold Russia accountable uh, for the crimes that it's perpetrating on the ground in Ukraine. But I would also say that we are not waiting for those determinations to be made in order to start imposing costs on Russia. Costs that at this point, uh, outside analysts uh, have said it is going to lead to a 15 percent or more uh, reduction in Russia's GDP over the course of the year. And that Russia's own officials are saying uh, the impacts are going to continue to intensify in the weeks and months ahead. All right. John Finer, good to see you. Thank you so much for joining me at the press. Really appreciate Thanks it. Thanks very much. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.